Welcome to the Rejex Podcast. Today we are with Ashutosh Shastri, who is the Director of NSTAT Consulting and a bit of a natural gas expert. Ashutosh, welcome to the podcast. Let me jump straight into the first question. You know, we are entering a climate of sub-dollar to Henry Hub prices stateside, or at least that is what the market is fearing. So what does that mean for uh, American exports and American domestic market as far as natural gas goes? Well, thank you, Gaurav. Thank you for having me on your podcast. It's a pleasure to participate. Uh, this has been a, a topic of discussion for quite some time. Uh, the history of uh, the f- the sh- the failure of the shale gas industry uh, has been you know has been written for quite some time. You know, we we still haven't seen the end of it yet, and perhaps there are certain underlying reasons for it. One of the first ones, really, is that you know the gas, which is uh, a, a, a product that comes out comes out with liquids and shale oil <coughs> so while the gas is uh, you know sub $2 uh, the the economics or the attraction of the the investment thesis really for these projects is on the uh, back of the NGL sales and the oil sales the second thing is that you know what does that do to the second aspect really actually has been the competitiveness um, and the continuing search for efficiency within the US shale gas players so that has kind of put paid put to this whole uh, you know speculation about you know they're bound to fail they're on the brink of failure but it hasn't happened we haven't seen it yet instead what we've seen is consolidation the third to respond to your question about what happens to the wider gas play as a result of this sub two dollar oil is I guess the very clear implication is that the feed gas prices come down uh, which improves the cost competitiveness of the international LNG industry, which means that you know if the feed gas cost comes down, then uh, the U.S. LNG can expect or hope to deliver uh, LNG cargos uh, which are within the band of uh, what is the acceptable market price in Europe. So internationally it improves the competitiveness and it is very paradoxical the relationship between oil price internationally and the gas price in the U.S. You know, it seems that the Americans going nowhere anytime soon. They're going to be a player in the industry and perhaps even a dominant player in the industry. And it's an industry that, in the eyes of many academics and theorists and analysts, has great potential because a lot of people regard natural gas as the bridging fuel towards a low-carbon economy. So what does your crystal ball tell you? How, how is it all going to pan out over the next five, ten years? Thank you, Gaurav. I mean, I'm, this is a... This is a very interesting question, and uh, I have a I have an issue with the word bridge fuel, because if it's a bridge to this low carbon economy, what is this bridge? Is it a long narrow bridge or is it a short fat bridge? What are we talking about? Uh, you know, I think the gas industry thinks differently, because the gas industry. What are you giving the signal to the gas industry, saying, okay, you are going to be the bridge fuel for the next 25 years, and then we would like you to quietly fade away. I mean, is that what we are saying to this industry? They are not, you know, the, they, their investment thesis, their communication to their shareholders doesn't work that way. I think what we are seeing within the gas industry in itself is a transformation where the gas industry sees itself as a destination fuel and not a bridge fuel. I think this is a very important message that needs to be understood that, you know, the gas industry is the natural owner of a whole lot of other gases which are going to come through uh, following natural gas, synthetic gas, power to gas, biogas, bio LNG, all of these are going to create what I kind of characterize as a universal gas platform in 2040, where some of these uh, assets will be fungible to be able to accommodate different types of gases. Therefore, I dispute the idea that gas is a bridging fuel. I feel that you know the story really is the gas is a destination fuel. What kind of gas, whether it is natural gas or LNG, that's an open question. Or hydrogen, that's an open question. But gas is a destination fuel. I think hydrogen is a topic for another day, but, but you've just set us up very nice. I was about to ask you next, which is the world needs natural gas. What is it, what form is going to be? Is it going to is the competition between piped gas and liquefied natural gas? It's heating up. How competitive are things getting? And where are we going from here? Well, <clears throat> look, uh, it is very clear that the shift to the center of gravity is shifting clearly eastwards, and there is a lot of discussion on China and, and on India. And you know, while China has a direct land connection to Russia, 
and the 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 power of Siberia and the West East pipeline. So the, China is playing a game which is you know they are maximizing on LNG and they're maximizing on pipeline, and they can do both. They have a market size that allows them to do both. Uh, India, for example, the other market is developing domestic gas pipelines, and they may have on land, you know, sh small scale LNG liquefaction or on uh, or small scale uh, LNG uh, chains. Uh, but it is clear that the search for efficiencies is kind of moving very quickly, both in the case of pipeline technologies and in the case of uh, LNG. So my sense is that we might end up. In a, in a couple of years time challenging the conventional wisdom of this 2000 kilometers as a break even distance we may actually come to a view that that break even distance perhaps is now 1500 or even 1200 kilometers what that does to the lng industry is actually quite interesting what we are likely to see is short run fast switching gas which will make pipeline and lng talk to each other much more rapidly much in a very different manner we are not there yet but we might get there you know, it begs to ask the question, we've got a plethora of resources, we've got a number of buyers, the market needs it, the resource is there. Yeah, do you really get a sense that, given that the plethora of resources, that the buyers finally have an upper hand? Is it a buyer's market? Are we getting there? The buyers certainly feel so at this point in time. Uh, the, the LNG industry, or particularly the LNG industry, has a history of absorbing its surplus rather quickly. Uh, I wonder whether this will happen this time again, but uh, it is clearly for now the buyer's market. But you know, the long-term prediction is that you know we are moving to 2030 as a 600 uh, million tons plus market. So in the long term, I think you know there is still a lot more resource that is still yet to come. That was Ashutosh Shastri. He is the director of Enerstat Consulting. Thank you very much for your time, sir. For more details on ReachX podcast, go to ReachX.co. Thank you, Gaurav.